Michael Myers is back for another Halloween, but this time he's out for revenge in Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers, even though the subtitle is missing from the intro. <laughs> Halloween 4 left us off with a weird cliffhanger, which no one could have guessed would leave us with a mute Jamie Lloyd, who is also, for some reason, telepathically linked to her uncle, Michael Myers. But you call it shiny. While Jamie's been hanging out in the hospital, her uncle has been couch surfing in a hobo's cabin. That is, until Halloween rolls around, waking him up from his slumber, and he goes searching for his niece once again. Luckily for her, Dr. Loomis is still in town. But, once again, for some reason, he has to convince the authorities that Michael is, yet again, returning to Haddonfield. God. How many people did he kill last year? Have you forgotten? Damn, you'd think after all this time, people would finally start listening to the man. Then again, when he does stuff like this, it certainly doesn't help. Today in the cemetery, suddenly dug up a coffin. It was a coffin of a nine-year-old girl. What do you think he's going to do with that? Still, Jamie is going to need all of the help she can get, even if it comes in the form of a brunette Kelly Bundy and a stuttering love interest. Woman! Today, Junior! With all of that being said, let's take a look back at Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers, and go over 10 things you may have not known about the movie. Number 1. Who Needs a Script? Halloween 5 was a rushed sequel to say the least. So rushed, in fact, that a script for the film hadn't even been finished by the time filming had begun. We actually started filming without a completed screenplay. As just one result of this hectic workflow, a lot of confusion remains over the origins of the now infamous Man in Black, with several cast and crew members stating that he wasn't even in the script. Instead, his character was purportedly added on a whim while in the middle of filming, and no one had a clue as to how he would even relate to the film. That was kind of interesting. I mean, I wasn't really told who it was, but I played him some of the times. Supposedly, they added the character because it would give them something to tie into for the next sequel, and that would be a problem that they would hand off to someone else in the future. I do know, though, for a fact that at the end of five, no one had any clear vision what man, the man in black was. Number two, Rachel's original death scene. Actress Ellie Cornell was excited to reprise her role as Rachel Carruthers for Halloween 5, though she had a suspicion that her character wouldn't survive this go-round with the shape. However, while reading the script, she was upset to find out exactly how early on into the film Rachel would meet her demise. You know, I went from being in the shower running outside in a towel to getting killed. It was like, you know, there wasn't much there. And you can only imagine how she felt when she realized just how her character was going to be killed off. You see, originally, Rachel was going to have the scissors rammed down her throat rather than taking them in the shoulder. Cornell argued that this wasn't appropriate for her character, and the scene was changed. You know, I made a fuss about that, and they rewrote it so it was a little bit less um, graphic. Either way, a healthy dose of scissors down the throat probably isn't good for you, even if you are on a diet. That's not the only thing you're eating, Rachel. Mom, I'm on a diet. You want an oinker for a daughter? Number three, the original intro. The doctor. Originally, Michael Myers wasn't going to be rescued by a random, shack-dwelling hermit in the beginning of the film. Instead, he was going to be discovered and taken in by a character named Dr. Death, a practitioner of the occult. As a matter of fact, Dr. Death would be the one to give Michael the thorn symbol seen on his wrist throughout the film. And he puts the tattoo on me, and there was a whole bunch of, you know, witchcraft things, spells and whatnot. And on Halloween, I come back to life. However, much like the Hermit, Dr. Death would then be killed by a reanimated Michael Myers. I get up, 
grab him, take him up over my head, I break his back, throw him on the altar, and I put the rock through his chest. I thought that was kind of a nice scene. Producer Mustafa Akkad wasn't a fan of the idea, to say the least, and wanted the intro to be reshot with a simpler, arguably just about as unrealistic, nursed back to health angle. Number four, BMX Billy. Originally, rather than just being some sort of stuttering love interest, Billy was meant to be a BMX racer. Scenes were filmed with Billy riding bicycles and saving Jamie's life, but they never made it into the film. Number five, costume changes. There was a couple costume changes made in the film. First up, the brute mask Michael Myers wears when picking Tina up was originally going to be a Ronald Reagan mask but this idea wasn't approved of by the studio. I guess there was more business to be lost than gained by mixing politics into a genre film at the time, <clears throat> purge election year, but that wasn't the only wardrobe switch up brought on by moral concerns. Behind the scenes, Sammy and Tina swapped costumes, as Tina was originally meant to wear the devil costume while Sammy would rock the French maid outfit. However, the director didn't believe it would be befitting of the film's heroine to dress as a devil, and so the switch was made. They didn't want the heroine of the movie to be the devil, because they felt you wouldn't really feel for her as much, so instead they made the girl that has sex the devil. I loved my costume. I was so happy to have that costume. It was really fun. Number six, what? There was going to be a scene where Michael goes on a rampage, killing an entire SWAT team in front of a clinic. But, like a lot of the other planned scenes, it never made it into the movie. We just had a distress call from the clinic. They haven't been able to reach them again. There were four men up there. Number seven, there was too much child violence. Speaking of cutscenes, unlike Halloween 4, which originally didn't have enough violence for the higher ups, Halloween 5 had too much violence, and they totally crossed the line in terms of child violence. During the infamous laundry shoot scene, with Jamie trying to avoid being stabbed by Michael, a deleted scene shows Michael's knife actually penetrating her leg. If you take notice as she's climbing out of the laundry chute, you can see the entry wound. Jamie's little crush, Billy, wasn't safe either. While Michael is chasing them in the Camaro, Billy was originally going to be hit by the car, rather than jumping out of the way, which is why he's limping later in the film. Number 8. The Death of Dr. Loomis Halloween 5 was originally going to be the last time we would see Dr. Loomis. When he collapses on top of Michael at the end, it was originally to signify the death of his character. That's how it was written in the script, that's how it was filmed, and we're not led to believe anything different for the remainder of the film. As far as Halloween 5 is concerned, Loomis died at the end of the movie. However, since his death wasn't totally obvious or violent, when production began for Halloween 6, they figured they could easily resurrect his character for the film. He's laying on top of me and I'm supposedly dying, he's dying and the lights are flashing. He whispers to me, he goes, now I get it, I abused you as a child. Number nine, the impromptu premiere. Everyone loves having a movie night with their friends, but when Danielle Harris was a child, she got the ultimate movie night out. With Harris living in New York, she was unable to attend the premiere for Halloween 5 in Los Angeles. So, producer Mustafa Akkad sent her mother a wad of cash and told her to create their own premiere in New York. Harris's mother went on to rent out a theater for her daughter and allowed her to invite all of her friends to the showing. After rounding up around 40 to 50 people, they went to the theater that night and they had an absolute blast, thinking the movie was the greatest thing ever. Number 10, Donald Pleasance passes the torch. On set, there was a trailer that had three different rooms. One room was for Danielle Harris, one was for Jeffrey Landman, and the other was a classroom so they wouldn't miss out on their schoolwork. Donald Pleasance, on the other hand, had a massive trailer which everyone envied because it had a bed in it. 
When filming wrapped for Pleasance, he stated that his trailer would remain on set and that it would go to Harris because she's the star of the film now. So he made them keep this big ass, like 40 foot trailer for me. Uh, and I just thought it was, it was the coolest thing. Once again, this Halloween night has come to an end and little Jamie was able to survive the onslaught of Michael Myers. But what about that mysterious man in black? What happens next? You'll just have to find out in our next video when we cover 10 things you didn't know about Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Until next time, my friends. Quiet, Spooky. You ever seen a bird take this big? Be quiet.